For a culture that pretends that anything short of uninhibited sexuality is prudish and old-fashioned, we sure do have a lot of rules. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. Chuck Colson used to say that to judge the truth of a worldview, you just got to follow it to its logical conclusion. And as Apple TV's The Morning Show is accurately depicting, confusion is the logical conclusion of the secular demands for sexual freedom. The Morning Show is about a shakeup at a fictitious morning newscast after its male anchor is fired for sexual misconduct. Now, if you hear faint echoes of Matt Lauer and Fox News, yes, this show is an example of art imitating life. Given the all-star lineup of actors, it's not surprising just how well acted the show is. What is surprising is how relatively nuanced it is, especially for a Me Too show coming out of Hollywood right now. The morning show's lead anchor, played by Steve Carell, is unambiguously wrong. But he might not be the only one. The show, like the culture it's vividly portraying, raises more questions than it has answers. Can a boss and a subordinate engage in any appropriate romantic relationship? Is flirting always wrong? Does a workplace culture with lewd jokes and accepted promiscuity bear any responsibility for victims? If a man cannot use his power to advance their career, can a woman use her body? And so lines are drawn and then redrawn all over the place, and it's all so deeply confusing. Our best attempt at a way forward is a new, elevated notion of consent. But what exactly is consent? How is consent given? What if consent is given, but later regretted? Now, I realize how delicate all of this is, and I'm grateful to have worked in places that have not yet had to deal with anything like workplace sexual harassment or sexism. I'm even more grateful as a husband that my wife communicates so well with me and works so hard to understand me. The problem is, is that culture-wide, we can't really seem to decide what consent is. Planned Parenthood, which I might add has a vested interest in promoting promiscuity, says consent is actively agreeing to be sexual with someone. But what does it mean to be sexual? How does one actively agree? The Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network says consent, quote, doesn't always have to be verbal. But what is it then? Dartmouth College in its student policy handbook says consent is clear, voluntary, and unambiguous agreement. Well, you get the picture. At the root of all of the confusion is the premise that sex is inherently unhooked from marriage. Our culture wants so-called sexual freedom while also demanding that everyone play by some set of rules that we can't nail down and we refuse to ground in anything substantial. How do we expect everyone to live by a same standard like consent while rebuffing the very notion of having standards in the first place? The fact is... Only marriage is substantial enough to ground any sexual standards that will be able to bring about health and wholeness. Sex is like fire. Marriage is like a fireplace. When the fire stays in the fireplace, it brings light and heat and ambiance. Maybe it even preserves life. But when the fire jumps out of the fireplace onto the curtains, it instead brings death and destruction. Sex long ago in our culture jumped out of the safety of the marriage fireplace. And now we're trying to contain it again. But a fuzzy notion like consent will be about as effective of a fireplace as a cardboard box. We're trying to have it both ways. It's not working. It cannot work. We can't pretend to be liberated from limits and then erupt in self-righteousness when someone crosses a line. But there's also good news here. Our collective reactions are revealing that there is a law written on our hearts and that it's not some arbitrary standard. God didn't design sex to be between one man and one woman because he's mean. He did it to protect men, especially women. It protects us because it's how he made us. Healthy marriages offer a wider, life-giving context for consent. The upfront commitment to another's best, the joining of families, the constant mutual giving of self to another, and a union that God both recognizes and celebrates. That context has no substitute, not cohabitation, not in bosses using power over subordinates, certainly not in hookups, even if consent is, quote, unambiguously given. Reducing sexual ethics to something as downstream as consent leaves it all alone, on an island, without any mechanisms of virtue or of safety to support it. Left alone with only our egos, brute strength and unrestrained passions only guarantees that pain, emptiness, and abuse will inevitably follow. So I say, thank God for his brilliant design. 
for Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.